Hi everyone, it's getting very close to Christmas and uh, everyone else is doing it, so I'm going to do it as well. Here's what my recommendation for my Christmas gift buying guide for the photographer is. There's a, a whole bunch of different price brackets, I'm going to try and do a couple within each one. So the first price bracket uh, I'm dealing in pounds here is from zero to hundred pounds. What would I recommend for the average person uh, or the, the, the gifter giving someone something to a photographer? Here's what I would say. First one I would say is for somebody that needs a camera, we want an action camera, the GoPro Hero, the basic one that's come out, is a phenomenal choice um, for somebody trying to get something for under hundred pounds. Full on, full body action camera that you can attach to anything. Yeah, you may want to buy some extra attachments like a harness or a helmet mount and all that kind of stuff. But for just getting a camera straight away, I can do 1080, 720, full HD video. The GoPro Hero, basic as it comes out, just as it is, um, is fantastic. Five frames a second photos, I think it's five megapixels as well. Um, it's just for the money. You can't go wrong with that. It's an absolute solid buy for a hundred quid. Another thing I would say um, is the Yong Nuo flashes. Um, you can get them for Nikon or Canon mounts, or you can get them where they're not for any particular mount as well. Um, the one I would actually advise the most would be the Yong Nuo 565 EX TTL. Uh, and I would say if you can, get two, uh, so you can have off-camera flash as well. Um, but uh, make sure that you get, there's, there's ones which are specifically for Nikon, or there's ones which are for specifically for Canon. Um, so just be careful whenever you are ordering those. I'll put a link to all these down in the description below. Um, so both under £100, one's a flash, one's a camera. One other thing I would say is there is a great, like a whole lighting studio here. I, I cannot understand how they do this price. Um, but for under £60, you're getting four umbrellas. What is it? Black, silver, white, four umbrellas, continuous bulb uh, at uh, daylight temperature, uh, 5,500 Kelvin. Full uh, photo light stand studio lighting kit set. It's like, holy crap, what what a deal. I've, I've never seen that before, but I'm looking at it just thinking, that is uh, astonishing. Even if you're just getting it for the actual light stands themselves, one can get to two meters. Um, that's that's a pretty pretty awesome deal there. Um, and then you can stick all your flashes. Uh, you might want to get different mounts if you're wanting to add your actual like uh, young new flashes onto it. Um, but otherwise, that's a that's a very cheap and easy way to start doing some studio flash uh, that you could do it in your house or anywhere that you want. And the fact that you've got a continuous bulb of 135 watts, uh, it's not a, it's not going to like blow you away, but it means you've got a modelling light effectively uh, for you to be able to figure out how the lighting is landing on the person that you're going to be taking photos of. But that that's a good deal. Okay, so that's my up to 100 hundred pounds. Hold on, another one which is about to put in the uh, £100 and up uh, bracket was the Pro-Z feature, um, Pro-Z ND graduated filter kit, uh, the cooking one, which is what I use on all my camera stuff. Uh, it doesn't work if you've got a bulbous end uh, lens, but if you've got anything with a flat lens that you can put a filter on, this is a great way to really bring in some detail into the skies. Um, normally £176, uh, down to under £90. Uh, that would be a great little present to have so you can take what looks like HDR photos straight away in camera um, and uh, certainly if you're doing video work, very important with that as well. The next range, I'm going to go from about 100 up to about £350 kind of range. Um, one of the first things I'm going to say, again, this is more for the video guys, but generally everyone will be getting into more video with their photography. Uh, the Rode Video Mic Pro, I again say this is a, a fantastic thing to have uh, on your camera or in any situation where you're wanting to get better audio. Uh, the in-camera mics of your cameras do a good job, but having a dedicated mic which you have adjustable features on it is just so good. Uh, it makes audio so much better. So the Rode VideoMic Pro compact directional on-camera microphone is what I use for most of my kind of uh, shoots where it's like interview kind of stuff. So that works really well. And that's only 110 pounds, cheaper than when I bloody bought it. Uh, the next one, 
going to the higher end. Again, this is more video style. Uh, the glide track um, for getting smooth panning and tracking shots. Uh, so good. There's a whole bunch of different options here. I would say the 1.5 meters, that's more than enough than you'll ever need. Uh, for all my professional work, I use a one meter um, glide track. And even then, you're not using the full meter. You're only going to the end where the actual tripod, uh, where the actual mount ends. So you're, it's more around about 70 centimeters that you actually use. So I would say going for the meter long um, glide track will be absolutely good. Uh, and these can take up to, this one can take up to about 12 kilograms worth of gear, but all you're wanting to get is smooth panning video shot, the trick is to do it nice and slowly. The Glide Track uh, company, or the one. I'll put the link to the one uh, which I use in the description down below, but a very, very good one to go for. Another thing, back to more photography stuff, is uh, the a carbon fibre tripod. I can't actually express how much this is good. Uh, I'm not going to say, oh, it's amazing, oh, my photography has completely changed and all that stuff, but it's just so good. Uh, I've got two two tripods, one's a, a metal, aluminium, which is very light, and I've got a carbon fibre one, which is even lighter, feels plasticky, it feels, it feels cheap whenever you, but you're like, oh, this feels so light and not that good, but that's just carbon fibre, it is actually just incredibly light and unbelievably strong, as you will have seen in some of my other videos, where I've thrown axes at it and stuff like that, and the, it survived. Um, but the thing for me about it is, A, it's lighter. The one which I say, the Photo Pro one, um, has the ability to be folded all the way right up the way, so it becomes a much smaller actual tripod uh, than if you're going to go with, for example, Manfrotto. Their one doesn't do that that I know of. Um, and uh, just, for me, in cold conditions like this, sometimes I'm not wearing gloves, holding onto an aluminium tripod, you're like, oh, that's really bloody cold. Meanwhile, here you're getting one with an actual head. I think it comes with a head, um, and uh, it's under two hundred fifty pounds uh, for a carbon fiber. You're like, that's that's really good. Normally, they're around about three fifty uh, kind of pounds. And this one has just got the hand twist um, leg extensions, which I find better. Um, the ones we have to clip, clip, clip is fine. I, I have no problem with that. But sometimes you have to clip it, and sometimes you just ping your thumb again. I'm thinking about in the cold. And bang, oh, it hurts your thumb so much if you try to squeeze it shut. Oh, it can really kill your fingers if you just ping it too hard. Um, but with these just kind of like twist and then extend, I've never had any problems with that. So my, uh, I, my advice to people is the twisty ones are, are better. There's, and also you can just lock them better. Um, I've got my, one of my big tripods I use for my video is a clip one. And no matter how much I tighten it, it still um, kind of moves within itself, so it doesn't quite work. Clip the twisty ones, fantastic. So clip, uh, twisty, carbon fibre, and folds up to being absolutely tiny. The carbon fibre tripod is a total win there. Next region between 350 and I'll go around about 800, 900 pounds uh, for this one. Uh, again, we're, we're getting into expensive realms where you're not really going for gadgets, you're going for actual things, as in cameras and lenses here. Um, and there's two lenses which I cannot recommend enough. Uh, the first one, if you've got a cropped framed camera, the so if that's like the Nikon D300, 5000, 3000, 7000, that kind of region of cameras. Uh, whoa, what an astonishing lens. The Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8. Oh my god, an f1.8 zoom uh, is astonishing. Um, for, we're going for, it was around about 800, you can get it now for 636 pounds. Um, amazing. Again, make sure that you're getting it for either the Canon or the Nikon uh, mount. I think it also does it in another mount as well, maybe Sony. I'll, uh, if I find the link for that, I'll put it in the description down below. But just, that is a, is a strong lens for, for everything. For if you're just doing street photography and you're walking around and you need something which is uh, wide enough. Um, so in, in terms of like 35 millimeters, it's saying that's a 27 to 52 millimeter f1.8. Uh, so if you go, oh, I want a 50 mil lens here, here's a 50 mil lens and it's a f1.8 score. Uh, oh, you want a, a wider shot as well? Here it is at 27 millimeters, which is 18 millimeters um, on, on the Canon. Uh, on the Nikon, I think it's, it's 26, a little bit of a difference. Um, but uh, yeah, just, just, and in fact it's 1.8 as well. That is really 
good. Just cannot, cannot recommend that enough. If you've got a full frame camera, this lens won't cover the full uh, sensor. So the other option I would recommend, again, is a lens which I've got is a Tamron 24-70 VC. Again, you've got it in different mounts. You've got the Nikon Canon, possibly other ones as well. I can't quite see it there. But the 24-70 VC lens, vibration control uh, or compensation, just works so well and is so much better than the older lens which I had, which was very, very cheap, uh, the 28 to 70 f2.8. But the vibration c compensation on this works a treat and its focus is uh, ultra ultrasonic disc or something, whatever it is. Uh, very nice and quiet, smooth focusing going on uh, in this lens. So if you've got a full frame camera, couldn't recommend this one enough as a kind of a walk around lens. Okay, it will be pretty heavy, um, but if you've got a full frame camera, you you want a good lens. That is a stonker. And the Nikon and Canon equivalents are double the price, so so I wouldn't even go there. But that would be a great uh, lens kit. However, if you're just like I don't even have a camera yet, the camera I would actually really recommend just now for six hundred pounds is the Panasonic GH three. Uh, so I'm I'm currently shooting with the GH4, which I'm finding astonishing. I had to play with somebody's uh, GH2 as well, uh, GH2 the other day and a GH3, and th there's there's no difference. <laughs> it's just like this is this is pretty much my camera. I I don't see the difference here apart from it being half the price. Um, the so you can get the Panasonic Lumix GH3. Um, for six hundred quid, so pretty pretty decent price there. Um, it's got full HD, 1080p video. The only thing it doesn't have is 4K and a couple of other deeply embedded features which are well inside the the menu settings. But it, for a solid camera, for somebody that just wants a camera straight away, you can't, like that's really good. Uh, it's a really good camera. Um, micro four thirds, meaning if you're wanting, again, if you're wanting something to, to walk around with, this camera works really well because it's Pretty small, pretty light in comparison to some of the other cameras. Um, in terms of lenses, there's a whole pile you can get with it. There's a four, there's one where it comes with 14 uh, to 140, so 10 times zoom. Uh, but that's bringing it up to a thousand pounds, so that's a little bit out of the the price bracket here. And um, but if you've got some, but what you can do if you've already got Nikon lenses or anything like that, you can buy a very cheap 20 pound uh, photo iox. Uh, adapter and you can put your Nikon lenses on it. It does magnify them so that they are then two times the focal length. So a 50 mil is a 100 mil um, uh, in terms of its field of view, but it means you don't need to buy anything new. But in terms of a good camera, that is really good. Uh, and if you were thinking of spending a thousand pounds, I would say save, you know, unless you're really planning on doing 4K video, get uh, the GH3 and then just get a couple lenses with it because it just works so well. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, one camera and two lenses I would highly, highly recommend. One other lens, actually, I forgot to say this, again, more for video guys, because it's a manual focus only lens, but it is so damn good, is the Samyang 35mm f1.4. Um, there's also a total video one, which is a 35T 1.5. T means transmission, that's just about how much light actually gets through, so it's close to a 1.4. Um, a a VDSLR manual focus lens for Canon, uh, it is... So good. I I had that and the 85 and and just how it feels is so good. But you've got it for Canon, Sony, Nikon, and for Micro Four Thirds. You've got all those options. Um and it's in the kind of three well for Canon it's the cheapest 319. Um and then if you want the, the video version, which has got a different um aperture uh control and some extra grooves on it. Um, but I absolutely love the 30. I, I love the 35 millimeter f 1.4 more than the 24 millimeter f 1.4. Again, every photographer's got their own different opinions and their own different likes and all that kind of stuff. But for me, on a full frame camera, the 35 mil f 1.4 was fantastic and just gave me such a a good look. I used it in a music video um, quite a lot, quite substantially, and uh, it just it's just lovely. Great lens uh, for somebody to buy. If, if, if you're thinking of like, hey, I've got a guy who's into videos, he's bought a camera and he's in a video, get this lens and they'll be blown away by A, how sharp it is, B, how bright it is, and C, how smooth focusing it is. Um, good option there. We're getting up to the money, no object kind of area. So £900 and up. Maybe I'll make a limit of like two grand on this. Um, so this is somebody just 
splurging money left, right and centre. But what if you're splurging money left, right and centre, but you're not really caring too much about, oh, I've got to have a big body, I've got to have a billion pixels, I've got to have this, but you want to look cool. What, what would I recommend for that? Well, okay, I'm sure everyone watching this video will agree with me on this bit. If you want to look cool, you've got to have a cool camera. It, it, it's a fact. And uh, there's two things that can either be cool. One, a massive lens, or two, a cool camera. Uh, the cool camera, I would say at the moment, it's not necessarily the biggest camera, but the Fuji X-T1, oh, it's, it's a beautiful camera. Nikon brought out is Nikon DF trying to be a whole retro looking camera and it just looked like a mutant of retro on the top but a digital camera on the back it looks pretty crap. Uh, Fuji on the other hand just have such better design in their actual cameras it looks so good and um, but there's a there's one in particular which I would say is the coolest camera in the world uh, at the moment is the Fuji X-T1 okay so I'm saying that that's the, the coolest looking camera but there's one called the graphite oh, oh look at the colors look at it oh it's like gun metal or something I don't know what it is but it's oh that looks so good it just looks so good uh, and it's got a flippy out screen as well handy handy so thin oh so that's okay um that's 1200 pounds uh, if you're getting that, so that that's that's a that's a cool. I like that. If anybody wants to buy me a present, I'm I'm happy if you got me that one because it just just so I could look cool. Um, but with that, that's just the body that's zone. So then you need to get a lens. What lens would I say that you want to get with this? Again, if you want to look cool, don't get a zoom. <laughs> no, the best one has to be this one. It's a 56 millimeter f 1.2. Oh, the shallowness of the depth of field you can get with that. Oh, the brightness of the image you could get with that. Oh, the mushiness of the background you could get with that. I would say there's a couple of other ones which are like F1.4s. There's like 23mm, F1.4 and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, okay, we're going for a £1,000 again here. So yeah, we're, we're bouncing off the budget. But oh, just, just that's, that's good. That's a really good... Oh, good. Anyway, next. <laughs> so the other one I would say is, uh, let's say you're like a big lens. Big lenses are sexy. Uh, everyone knows that. The bigger the lens, the bigger your hands have to be to hold the lens. Um, and uh, if you want a super duper big lens for under a thousand pounds, this is amazing, is the Tamron 150. It starts at 150 and it zooms to 600 millimeters. And not only that, it's got VC, vibration control, which is why you so goddamn need that when you're at that kind of length, even if you're on a tripod. Um, that That's an astonishing uh, distance that you're getting with that. And when it's fully zoomed in, okay, you're at a 6.3 small, it's not a huge aperture. But if you're shooting wildlife kind of stuff, if you're out in the field on a even an overcast day, that's absolutely fine. Um, it's, it's You're not going to be shooting at... Uh, you're, you're not going to be too worried about that, but that is a... <sighs> If somebody wants a super telephoto lens for not too much money and has vibration control, like if you're again, if you're going with the Nikon or the Canon versions of these, you're talking three, four, five times uh, the price of this, and they usually don't have vibration control or VR or IS or any stuff like that in it. So that is a stonker of a lens, and having the vibration control definitely a good option in there. Additionally, if we're looking at uh, a person who doesn't have a camera at all, but you're willing to spend a good bit of dosh on it, the Sony a7R I would highly recommend. Um, for me, it wasn't really the camera I would want to be buying just because it was too small. My big, manly hands uh, couldn't quite deal with how small and fiddly it was. But however, if you're buying it for somebody else who maybe doesn't have quite as manly hands as, as I do, um, then this is a stonker of a camera. A billion pixels, I can't remember, I think it's about 36 million billion pixels, more than you'll ever need in a small body. Granted the battery life isn't all that great, but it's it's a powerful camera. The equivalent to that in Nikon is the Nikon D800, which is about twice the price of this again. So here again for £1,250. Um, 
so with that, I would say getting a, a, an astonishing lens like the Samyang 35mm f1.4 would be win-win, super win situation um, if you're going to do photos or videos. Because that Samyang at 35mm is super sharp, uh, even at f1.4. So if you're stopping it down to f2.2 or something, you're getting a s ultra sharp lens with an amazing camera with, or an amazing sensor. Um, uh, it's just, just a good option. There is also the a7 Mark II, which has a 24 megapixel camera and is going to have a vibration control in the actual uh, camera sensor itself. So maybe worth thinking about that, but I think that's a wee while until that one comes out. In fact, I'll just double check A7 uh, Mark II. Okay, it seems like the A7 Mark II is not out at the moment, but the A7R, uh, you're going to a little bit more expensive, much more pex megapixels um, and, uh, and a, a, a stronger sensor as well. A uh, slower frame a second, but I would say a good option for somebody who's, no, who's maybe just getting into photography and you want to buy them an awesome camera. Loads of options in it as well. So that would be my cameras. Okay, now I, I'm, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go to the money. No object. You are from Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Qatar, somewhere like that. What would I advise you to get? So if you are uber rich and you want to be having the best of the best that nobody else could even think about buying, uh, then there's it's all about the lenses, all about lenses. And uh, Zeiss, if you don't know them, they're good. Um, and they've got a 55 millimeter. Everyone says, oh, you should always have a 50 mil lens everywhere. And, and yeah, you can, but like Nikon, you can get an f1.8 for about, 90 pounds, uh, you can get an f1.4 for around about 300 pounds. Um, with Zeiss, you can get an f1.4 for 3,000 pounds. <laughs> it must be good. So definitely, I would uh, recommend that one for 3,169 pounds. Um, an f1.4, 55 millimeter lens. Definitely, if you can't take amazing, unbelievable, like astonishing award-winning photos with that then then you're crap uh what camera to get it with though that that's the thing uh again i would push you towards the two main brands you know people say oh get a hasselblad get a a phase one or a leaf or whatever those other ones are nah they're 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 for fools that those are um what i would say is uh again going with canon or nickel with uh with the uh, I would also say the 7200mm with, with it if you're going for Nikon, very good uh, camera to get. But for in terms of camera wise, the D810 from Nikon would be the one that I'd be recommend, recommending. Um, it's an astonishing camera, millions of pixels, uh, and quite a few things making it a better than the D800 and the D800e. Quite a few videos I've watched, reviews of that, just like in, certainly in video terms. Um, but uh, it's, it's kind of like the benchmark for quality cameras. If on the other hand you want to go with, with Canon, uh, the Canon alternative I would actually say would be the DX, would be the Canon DX. That's it, it's £7.90. No, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Yes, it'd be the Canon 1DX, that's what I was meaning to go for. So if about £5,500, I would recommend this one over the Canon 5D Mark III or any of the other Canons that are out there. Okay, it's only 18 megapixels, but if you're wanting to do some sports, you've got 14 frames a second, uh, super power and an awesome body. So again, making you look cool. Um, so that's the two options. If you're looking for billions of pixels, go with the Nikon. If you're looking for loads of frames a second, go with the Canon. If you're looking for image quality, I would say probably go with the Nikon. If you're looking for focus accuracy, go with the Canon. Um, it's it's up to you. Uh, so you've got that. You've got your 50 mil, uh, 55 millimeter f 1.4 lens. What about a telephoto? We all need a telephoto. Um, I would say the good one to get. It is a little bit cumbersome and a little bit difficult to move around. But the Sigma 200 to 500 millimeter f 2.8. So it's two hundred, it's two point eight, and it's a zoom, and it's at five hundred mils. Uh, it's pretty good. You may need a servant to carry it around for you, and possibly maybe a truck to actually take it around. But that I would say is is a good lens. Uh, a snip at fourteen and a half thousand pounds. Um, but to you, that's that's not that's nothing. Um, but it means you would be the the best photographer at any tennis match that you are going to be 
at the sideline of that'd be good. Uh, imagine, imagine that you're actually like at Wimbledon and you go, excuse me, excuse me, coming through. You sit in your little chair with people all around you, and then you bring out that Sigma super lens <laughs> and go, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm doing it for fun. <laughs> photo, photo, photo. That'd be hilarious. What would I, what would you stick that on? Would you stick that onto the Canon or would you stick that onto the Nikon? Mmm. Difficult, difficult question. I'd probably stick on the Nikon, I think. Um, hilarious lens. However, just in case you just don't ever, ever want to be shown up by somebody with another camera, or somebody, somebody having the same camera as you is just rude, isn't it? Um, then, you know, if somebody says, how many megapixels has your camera got? If you want to blow them away every single time, you can get a camera which is able to create two 100 megapixel images, and that is the Hasselblad H4D 200 MS. It's a multi shot, so it doesn't actually take 200 uh, megapixel images, it actually takes about four photos and does it all together, does magic. Um, but that's that's a, a snip 30, we'll just, we'll just round that up 35,000 pounds. Uh, and we'll need to get a couple lenses with that as well, which will be um, uh, pretty good. But that 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 camera will do you. Pretty well. Frames a second, pretty slow. Autofocus ability is not that great. Oh, but but skin tones, fantastic. Can't be. You know, it's it's worth the thirty two thousand pounds above the Nikon D eight hundred and ten. Uh, just just for those skin tones you get on it, you you cannot cannot disagree with that. Uh, well worth that. So that that is my Christmas buying tips from your one hundred pounds. To your 34, 35,000 pound buying region. Um, so uh, I suspect most of you watching this channel will be going for the Hasselblad. Uh, you know, if nobody's going to be looking at the 100 pound region. Hasselblad, I would say also you can get a Ferrari edition. That is definitely cooler, without a doubt. Um, you, yep, Ferrari edition, Hasselblad. If you can get it in gold, even better. So there you go. I hope that helps. Cheers. Bye-bye.